you all to today's research seminar series. Uh, we are organizing this program on Zoom and it is being uh, broadcast live on the Facebook page of Martin Chotari. Today's title is Emergence of Multi-Layered Locality in the Wake of an Earthquake, a Case of Disaster Response of an Affected Village in the Kathmandu Valley, Nepal. Our main speaker is Sonai Ito, researcher, National Institute for the Humanities, and visiting associate professor at Graduate School of Asian and African Area Studies, Kyoto University. As usual, today's presentation has two phases. In the beginning, our main speaker will speak for 40 minutes, 40 or 45 minutes. Then in second phase, we can put questions and comments to our speaker. Those who are connected through Facebook can use comment box or those who are on Zoom can use raise an option. Let me introduce our speaker. Sonai Ito received her PhD in 2019 from Kyoto University for her doctoral dissertation on disaster and locality in the Kathmandu Valley. She has published an article in the journal Sinas titled The Production of Locality Through Debris and a Festival, Aftermath of the Gorkha Earthquake in the Kathmandu Valley. She has also published an article in Journal of Environmental Science and Sustainable Development on the Waste Management System in Kathmandu Valley. Today's presentation is based on her PhD dissertation. Now, I would like to request Sonai Ito to deliver her talk. Sonai, now it's done. Thank you very much for introducing me. So I, I'm just starting my presentation. Can you see my presentation now? You can see, yes. Okay, so I'm starting now. Thank you. Okay, so so my name is Sana Ito from Japan. Now Japan is six fifteen in noon. Uh, in uh, the how to say Belka Belka Tabaze. Okay, so first the so purpose of this paper. This paper examines how community, which was already multi-layered before a disaster, was utilized during and after the disaster. While the government's response was inadequate, the people of P village who were affected by an earthquake and also a research site of my research, defined the scope of their activities, raised the fund, and carried out practical activities on their own. So before examining the case, let me see the previous researches. Uh, Self-help, mutual health, and public health have been widely regarded as the three most important pillars of disaster response. In general, self-help means protecting oneself and one's family. Mutual help means the cooperation of neighbors, private organizations, and volunteer groups to help each other in rescue and relief activities. And public help means rescue and relief activities by public organizations, such as the national government, prefecture, municipalities, and government-related organizations. And also, uh, Simizu argued that in addition to the above, it is necessary to consider external aid, that is, support by people outside the country or region affected by a disaster. And in disaster response, the locality is recalled in the context of self community, public, and outside. Locality appears as a kind of landscape, a scape as a particular calls it, when a disaster occurs. The locality that emerges here is not necessarily one that corresponds to administrative boundaries. Instead, it emerges in an ambiguous form 
of on a case-by-case -case basis in the disaster area where the activities of the local people, the community, the public and the outside world are sometimes intertwined and occur simultaneously. This paper explores the question of whether the ambiguity of locality leads to a better response to a disaster. Relationship, relationships with a high degree of flexibility and ambiguous membership are more capable of responding to extraordinary risks such as disaster. On one hand, the response to the earthquake in the study area was immediate and not managed by a single organization or person. On the other hand, in order to connect with each other and carry out actual activities, it was necessary to explain the target of the activities and the people to whom they were connected. It was necessary to create a community as well as to create a network immediately. In this paper, I will focus on the spaces in which people connect with each other in a flexible manner and the expansion of these connections. The scope and the content of the activities conducted by the disaster victims themselves who had little expectation of government support were defined by the resources they possessed. As a result, both survivors and those who wanted to help them had to make decisions and explain who to stand in solidarity with and where to conduct relief activities. So this paper argues that the situation of production of so this paper argues that the situation of production of locality as discussed by a party line was activated and occurred under the disaster and that the locality produced there and the community imagined as its base was not a single entity but a complex and multi-layered one. The production of locality, uh, a body line discusses locality that continues to be produced against odds. Body line defines locality as a structure of feeling produced through relationships and context. So, this is the perspective of this paper, I will try to uh, examine the uh, activities of the people in the research site as a production of locality. But uh, before discussing the specific situation of the study area after the disaster and the activities of the people there, I would like to describe the situation of the study area before the disaster. The village, the study site, is a newly farming village located near Kathmandu. In recent years, due to its proximity to Kathmandu, the number of houses and the population has continued to increase. The village was originally a typical Newari village with clear gated boundaries, but due to changing lifestyles and population growth, houses now stand, be, uh, houses now stand beyond these boundaries, and there is no clear visual separation from the surrounding villages now. In the Newar community of the Kathmandu Valley, such as P Village, Locality changed through the governmental project of building a nation state, especially through the establishment of the boundaries of local government. 
During the 1960s, local governments were established in the formation of the nation state. Since then, the local government has emerged as a new locality with exclusive boundaries, unlike the previous gradient like naval village structure. Moreover, the boundaries of that local government were drawn, into, drawn in a way that divided the cities, villages, and the tolls that had existed before the establishment of the local government. So this is the map of P village and uh, the so P village is now divided into uh, not now uh, on 2015 uh, P village is divided into four words and now two words uh, but anyway it divided this way uh, the uh, green line shows the uh, boundary of the words so the the village and the words is uh, multi-layered in the in this area i mean the locality of words and also locality of p village both is now in this area and the people imagined both uh, community So Nevari village uh, traditionally took the form of being built on a hill and surrounded by gates. Like this way, the uh, brown, brown uh, square shows the gate. And so gates uh, surrounded the village. In recent decades, Nevar settlement have expanded. People live outside of the traditional gate. The locality of the Nevar society in Kathmandu, however, was not fully history site. Uh, rather, traditional festivals and rituals continue to be crucial element in maintaining this locality. So this, uh, I got this photo from Google Earth. So two thousand on in two thousand three, uh, th this is Ring Road here, and outside of Ring Road, in two thousand three, there was not so many houses, uh, beyond the, uh, Ring Road, but two thousand, uh, two thousand twenty one. So many houses here, and so, uh, villages like these villages is now. Uh, melted into Kathmandu city. Okay, so next, maybe uh, uh, all of you very well known about the Golga earthquake. So just briefly introducing the Golga earthquake. On April 25th, 2015, a powerful earthquake with magnitude of 7.8 struck east and central Nepal, and the death toll was around 9,000, and more than uh, 770,000 houses were destroyed. A P village was also damaged by the earthquake. 15 people died, and more than 500 houses were severely damaged in P village as well. So immediately after the earthquake, inside P village, people were rescued from collapsed houses and evacuated by villagers and people from neighboring villages who rushed to the scene. The next day, a group began researching, raising funds, and building temporary shelters. They called themselves the CDMC9, a Community Disaster Management Committee, Ward 9. However, when I spoke to Mr. Y, who was considered one of the core members of the committee, he gave the following response. 
I'm not really a member of the CDMC9. However, the vice chair and others were busy with his own work. There was no one else who could do it. It is good that we had the CDMC9 because it's anyway a leader. In fact, there were many people involved, including me, uh, Mr. J, and some of my younger friends who were not members of the CDMC9. In other words, it was just our friends. You know the friends you always see at the Dokashi t-shirt. Dokashi is a tall of a privilege. Mr. J, who is mentioned in the interview with Mr. Y, talked about their works as follows. We are working at the CDMC 9, but there were many people from outside of Ward 9. I also live in Ward 10. We were trusted by the entire village as Dokashi men. For this reason, we were able to work. Everyone trusts us. We were able to collect money and so on. Their, acti their activities were widely known within P Village. So uh, Mr. M uh, talking about their activities like, uh, like following. On the day of the earthquake, the question was, what should we do now? A group of young men from Dokashi looked around in P Village. They were the youth of the CDMC. So what is Community Disaster Management Committee? Uh, Community Disaster Management Committee is an organization created within the context of a disaster management development project. It had a pyramid-shaped organizational chart and was set up at the administrative world level. On the other, oh, on the one hand, uh, no, the, the CDMC that works at, the, at, the, at the, that time of the disaster has a different organizational chart and area of activity than its design. Its domain was actually unclear in uh, P Village. So those who worked at CDMC9 were Mr. Y. Those who worked at CDMC9 were Mr. Y, who did not have membership, and Mr. J, who lived in Ward 10, and others like them. The area of activity was not limited to Ward 9, but extended to Ward 10, 11, 12 as well. The expression of Dokashi men used by Mr. J seemed to be a more common term that was usually used to, to describe them. For example, Ms. A spoke about their activities on July 31st, 2015 as follows. 150 temporary shelters were built by men. You know the guys who are always at the Dokashi. The men did a good job. They did a really good job. And even though the temporary shelters they had just built collapsed in an aftershock, they kept on building. We helped them too. There is no doubt that the CDMC-9 played an important role in the immediate response to the disaster in P village, and this recognition was shared by the villagers. The CDMC itself is an officially established organization. It was set up as a governmentally defined and exclusive zone called a ward 
In reality, however, the people who worked under the name of the city MC9 were not necessarily residents of Ward 9. They were friends and were loosely defined and connected to each other as a category of dokashi men, both in their self-identification and others. The project site was also not limited to Ward 9. The temporary shelters built by CDMC 9 were widely scattered around outside the boundaries of Ward 9. And the people living in the shelters were not necessarily those who had re registered their residency in Ward 9. So what were the activities of the other city MCs that included village P, a P village? What is the relationship between them and the city MC9? Mr. B of city MC11 said the following about what happened at that time. Relief supplies, uh, almost no relief supplies were provided. They were not sufficient for everyone. There were many supplies at CDMC9. I also received and distributed them to people in Ward 11 because the member of CDMC9 are my friend. In the pre earthquake disaster management project, the Red Cross oversaw Ward 8, 11, and 16. The Lumanti oversaw the rest of the wards, municipality A. And when the earthquake occurred, we were divided here, and the wards on the Red Cross side were reluctant. Mr. B's story shows the villagers felt a dispar disparity between CDMCs. While activities were being carried out across ward framework, differences by ward also emerged throughout the disaster and subsequent activities. This was also due to the fragmentation caused by development projects. However, the materials were also transferred between CDMCs. Development projects based on administrative divisions are intended to provide equal services, equal services. However, after the disaster occurred, an unequal situation was created because different energy odds were contracted to implement disaster management project. This inequality was adjusted to some extent by the existence of the locality of P village and loose need friendship. The activities of CDMC9 were funded by donations from people living in foreign countries. A crowdfunding project plays an important role in collecting donations. Mr. S, who was studying in the United States, launched a crowdfunding project using GoFundMe, a crowdfunding portal. In the project description, he wrote the following in English. We are Community Disaster Management Committee from P Village and Municipality 9. We think it is the right time to call for a help to all of our brothers and sisters living abroad and possibly even the international community out there. This fund will go to our local, locally organized disaster management committee, which will help in the affected areas of P village, N village, A village, and other affected nearby communities. Thanks.
コミュニティ・ディザスター・マネジメント・コミュニティ、A ・マネジパリティ、B ・ビリッジ、カトマンドゥ・ネパ。Okay. Okay. 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 The writer is、uh, the writer, Mr. S, who is also the founder of the crowdfunding project. And so、uh, I asked Mr. S, who was on a, a, a so sorry, I asked Mr. S on February 9, 2070, when he m a k e a temporary visit to Nepal about what was going on at that time. I asked, what activities did you do after the earthquake? And he answered, after the earthquake, we did two activities. First, we sent out invitations to rich people and organized an event in the US. We introduced Nepal. We made Nepalese food. This event increased. $20,000. The event was organized by a group of Nepalese students from universities in、uh, the area. The money raised here sent to、uh, NGOs. And the other event was held by the Nepalese Association at the university. This was just us holding a donation box and asking for money by holding pictures of the earthquake and the Nepalese flags on the campus. The money we collected was sent to the Prime Minister's disaster fund. Since there was no mention of a crowdfunding project from him, I asked him about it.、Uh, How's about the GoFundMe? What have you do and how to establish that? How to contact with、uh, people, CDMC9 people in P Village? And then he answered,、uh, I established the project all alone. I had never consulted anyone before establishing this project. Of course, I informed the friends in P Village after I established the project. I used the name of CDMC9 because I thought CDMC9 was an official organization. It seemed easy to explain my friends in the US to where and how their money is. Will be used. In addition, I had many friends in CDMC9, so I had Biswas, Biswas on them. Here, too, there is a wide range of words that indicate locality. The names of villages, words, and nation states are widely used. No clear definitions were provided for each. The diversity of words used in crowdfunding projects and the ambiguity of their definitions. Gave his, friends more flexibility,、uh, gave, he, gave his friends more flexibility in using the funds he raised. However, during the interview, he did not talk about the crowdfunding project until I asked him about it. He talked about the fundraising activities he had done for Nepal as a Nepali living in the US. For him, This was the one that came to mind as the activity he did for the earthquake in Nepal. The crowdfunding project was not defined by him as an activity he did as a Nepali for the earthquake in Nepal. The trust in friends 
he spoke of was also an important factor. Also, he used many category, uh, cut, uh, sorry. Also, he used many categorically ambiguous words. For him, the target of the money raised through crowd, the crowdfunding project was imagined as a specific, loosely knit community with members he knew well. Through his messages, which often used ambiguous category, categorical words, people living abroad also imagined how to spend their limitances and make donations, each with their own loose, loose but substance, substantive images. In the crowdfunding project launched by Mr. S, the names, photos, and donations, donation amounts of the donors are listed, and we can get that list from the website. So I get that uh, I got that list and showed the list to Mr. S and Mr. Y and others of CDMC9 and asked them if they knew anyone. The interviews are summarized in table one. As can be seen in the table, few of the donations were from people they did not know at all. And many were from people they described as their friends, people from the village and people from a municipality. The fact that the donations came not only from P village, but also from the surrounding villages, and not only from the uh, nine wards, but also from a wide area, suggests that the diversity and ambiguity of the lead sentence of crowdfunding made it possible to collect donations from a wide range of people based on face-to-face -face relationships. As shown in the table, donations from the author and related parties account for 20% of the total. So on August 29, 2015, at the tea shop in Dokashi, I asked the following question about this matter. To the CDMC9 members or say Dokashi men. So I asked, do you want to raise more money? I might be able to raise some more money in Japan. Then Mr. V answered this question. If we collect more money, we will have to do more work outside the village. We all have other jobs. So I think this is just enough. The people who donate now know that it is for P village and the surrounding area. That's just enough. If we collect donations from people outside, we will have to work outside as well. So from the stories of Mr. S and Mr. V and others, we can see that the activities of the crowdfunding project was different from what they imagined as public activities. Mr. S told me that he did two activities for the earthquake, citing the fundraising activities he performed with other Nepali students at his university. The crowdfunding project was not including the framework of his activities for the earthquake in Nepal. Mr. V's statement also illustrates this point. They limited the scope of their activities to be P village and its surroundings. If they were to expand their activities further, they would have to work equally and systematically over a wide area which are beyond the scope of people who are involved as volunteers while doing other jobs. They also used the name of P village and a municipality to describe the scope of their activities 
but in truth, the scope is not clearly defined. They use the name CDMC9 because they believe that it is better to have a legal organization or official organization as Mr. Y and Mr. S expressed it. However, from the lead text and the interview with Mr. S, it can be seen that they are not envisioning a CDMC9 that is embedded in an actual government organization. In fact, in fact, it is the friends of Dokashi that are being evoked. The words Ward 9 and P Village are substantive image to them, but they do not have clear boundaries. The images of a person may or may not be consistent with others' image. The people who donated money also donated money based on the image evoked by those words and the image of Mr. S and his friends, those men who are always in Dokashi. So in, village, in P Village, a diverse range of organizations and groups were active immediately after the disaster, uh, besides the CDMC9. Many of the members of these organizations overlapped and were members of multiple organizations. The membership of each organization was loose one like CDMC9. The traditional organization here, Guti, is also worked for the response to the earthquake. The first activity undertaken by the Guti in P Village was the distribution of relief money, 5,000, to the families of the deceased. As is customary, funeral services are also provided by Guti. As a result, even in the chaos and shortage of materials after the disaster, the dead received funeral rites almost are prescribed. In addition to its central role as a funeral service, uh, funeral service Guti was also uh, worked as a hub of activities in the aftermath of the disaster. So uh, the one of the good member uh, recalled that time like this way. There was a meeting of the good. Uh, we we decided that we needed to deal with the trauma. Everyone was stunned in isolation. So we had a dinner party in schoolyard where we cooked and ate together. We prepared the food organized by Guti. In the schoolyard, there were many people who could not return to their homes. The event was not limited to the members of the big Guti, but also included the people living in and around the schoolyard. So the Guti, an organization with a traditional and well-defined membership, also became a hub for disaster response in P Village during the disaster. It is noteworthy that Guti was also engaged in activities beyond its membership. At first glance, Guti's activities appear to be a disaster response with a strong sense of community and locality. In reality, however, they were responding to the crisis of disaster by flexibly adapting to the contemporary situation in P village, where the traditional inhabitants are no longer the only ones living there.
there were also new bonds which emerged through the modernization in P village before the disaster. And these new bonds are also worked for the response to the disaster. For example, I would like to talk about school, school alumni, and women's cooperative. There were two public schools in P village, both of which functioned as base basis for first aid and relief activities. One of the schools functioned as an evacuation camp because it had a large schoolyard. Later, temporary shelters were built one after another in the schoolyard, and more than 30 families spent months to years in the schoolyard. So Mr. N, the principal of the school, records at that time. More than 100 organizations, uh, no, on, on the evening of the day after day of the earthquake, there were more than 1,000 people in the schoolyard. More than 100 organizations came to take care of them. Houses and other things were destroyed, but we did not know when the police and the government would come and that's when the community people did it. The youth did a very good job. Without them, I think more people would have died. <laughs> Foreigners also came to take care of us, including Asian, Japanese, and Canadian people. Some of the people who came to take care of us came by an internet, like Facebook. Many of our acquaintances and relatives also live abroad and help came through them as well. Also, as a person mentioned about the uh, relief materials and distribution of that. The schoolyard was used as an evacuation site, so a lot of outside aid came to the school. In that case, we called the CDMCs together and decided how to distribute the aid. And, uh, So, oh, so the schoolyard became an evacuation site and the school functioned as a base for the accu accumulation and the distribution of supply and support. In addition, the distribution of supplies was co coordinated by, with the CDMCs. In other words, the school functioned as a base for receiving support from outside and also provided supplies to the victims in cooperation with other organizations. And also, also uh, some person talking about the uh, connection among school friends uh, to get the uh, relief uh, activities. A friend of mine from college brought a Japanese NGO to P Village. My friend is a Nevali tour guide who lives in Kathmandu. He can speak Japanese. He called me on the day of the earthquake, he called uh, and said, I've been getting inquiry from Japanese people asking if there's anything I can do. 
So I said, just be, uh, just bring to me. And also, uh, there was a, there was a women's group, which was connected to the women's group in upload to get some aid. Uh, the Miss, Miss A, who as a representative of uh, women's cooperative in uh, P Village, uh, said that a group of women in China gave us a lamp through our women's cooperative. They said the concept is from woman to woman. So the schools, alumni, and women's cooperative are networks based on new frameworks that emerged in P Village after the relaxation of isolationist policies in the 1950s. These constituted connections based on a completely different logic than the traditional locality of villages, good deeds, and other relationships that connected people and land. These new relationships have also changed the spaces of the people who participate in them. These new relationships and new spaces provided a basis for people to build new relationships beyond the framework of the traditional locality of the village and to respond to disasters under disaster conditions. And also, uh, there was uh, external aid uh, coming from outside from P Village, and uh, that external aid makes new connections inside of P Village after the disaster. So to say the disaster also created new relationships in P Village. A NGO was established after the disaster with the support of Action Aid in P Village. And this organization, the main task of this organization is to uh, protection, uh, to, to protect and empower affected women. A shelter for affected women was set up in the schoolyard. The shelter was, according to the NGO and Action Aid, for the use of the women who were placed in the vulnerable, vulnerable environment of the temporary shelters and was equipped with toilets, showers, and accommodations. Six months after the earthquake, a program for women's empowerment began to be held in the shelter. In addition to disaster prevention education and raising awareness, a wide range of workshops were held twice a week, including speaking practice and agriculture training. In accordance with action and regulation, the members of these workshops were organized from women living in the world threat in a balanced manner in terms of ethnicity and caste. The women who were in their 30s to 60s came together for the pleasure of learning new things and chatting with new friends. So to say the activities of external organizations that flowed into the village in the wake of the earthquake led to the creation of new relationships this way. So in conclusion, although they were working under the name of their local land or group, their activities were not really confined to them in P Village. 
Categories emerged through modernization in Nepal were also used to form connection. Within these layered connections, people formed broad and loose networks. They, delimi they de limited the category of us to some extent, which made their activities possible. Us could be privilege, ward nine, municipality, or even a friend or a woman. It did not explicitly exclude anyone in that respect. It was a matter of define, defining what they could do and forming a logic to help each other as much as they could. The domain was expanded with the earthquake, and a new multi-layeredness and breadth were arising. The diverse, loose, and and the responsive connections that emerged after the disaster were multi-layered. People imagined locality in the form of pea village, wards, and women's cooperative, and so on. The imagined locality, our village, we women, or the customer, became the driving, driving force for implement, imp implementing actual activities in response to the disaster. The imagined locality and activities were interconnected and overlapping, and localities were produced when the same person participated and engaged in several activities simultaneously. Locality can sometimes be a logic of division and exclusion. In P village, too, there was division and inequality, inequity among words but the activities were compounded in a multi-layered locality that did not converge into one led to activities that avoided, though not completely, this fragmentation and exclusion. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Sonny, for your wonderful presentation.